So, we have our reference triangle, right? Any point, we have an x and a y. Here's your x value, here's your y value, here's your r value, right? Going around the circle. We have already established that sine, so we can use x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? That's one of our rules that we can use. If I know two, I can find the third one, right? We've already established that sine is y over r, right? We've also established that cosine is x over r. That is two of the six trig functions. We've got to do the other four today. So what's the third one? We got tangent. All right, so the third one is called tangent. We abbreviate it with TAN, so tangent of the angle. Do you guys remember, Sokotoa, what does tangent equal? Toa, toa. Opposite over adjacent, right? So here's my angle. So opposite's going to be Y, adjacent's going to be X. So tangent is equal to Y over X. So far so good? Easy stuff? Okay. So then we have what we call cosecant. C-O-S-E-C-A-N-T. We abbreviate it C-S-C. -C. Now, cosecant is nothing but the reciprocal of sine. So it's equal to the same thing as 1 over sine. So what does that mean? If sine is y over r, what's cosecant going to be? It's just r over y. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. A lot of people make the mistake, and there's going to be people in the room that are going to make this mistake, and I'm going to say this probably ten times over the next couple months. On your calculator, you'll see one that says sine. It looks like sine to the negative one, the second version of the sine button. That is not a cosecant button. It means something completely different. We will use that. I will teach you all about that. That button on your calculator is not a cosecant button. I have only seen one calculator in my life that actually has a cosecant button on it. It's a TI-89. It's the only calculator I've ever seen that has a button on there. None of the 84s have it. It's not there. Don't even bother looking for it. It's not in the menus. It's not anywhere. They're not in there. They're not in there because you don't need it. Because if I have a point, negative 3, we'll just do an easy one, negative 3, 4. That point is negative 3, up 4, it's up here. There's the angle we're looking for, right? So we should be able to find sine. By the way, what's my R going to end up being? 5, yep, right? X squared, Y squared, R squared. So sine is going to be Y over R. 4 over 5. Cosine is going to be x over r, so negative 3 over 5. Tangent is going to be y over x, so negative 4 thirds. And yes, guys, negative 4 over 3, 4 over negative 3, negative 4 thirds written like this are all three of those the same thing? Yes. Absolutely. We typically write this one. This one looks the best. This one aesthetically we all look at it and kind of cringe a little bit, right? It just looks weird. We don't usually write this just because it looks awkward. This one we try not to write as well for one reason. People write sloppy. 
And if you write sloppy, what could easily happen there? You could go negative four thirds, and all of a sudden that negative sign kind of looks like it disappeared, right? Just because people are sloppy, we try to avoid this one. It's not incorrect. This is not incorrect. That one just aesthetically looks the best, right? So if I have these three, if I have sine, do I also now know cosecant? Yeah, if cosecant is four, if sine is four fifths, what's cosecant going to be? Five fourths. You don't need another button on your calculator taking up space because all you do is take the reciprocal of it. And that's it. Make sense? Okay, so we got four. The next one, if we have cosecant, we also have secant. And we abbreviate that one SEC. If cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, what do you think secant is? It's just the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is x over r, what do you think secant is? r over x. So far, so good. So going back to our example, what would secant, come on, why do I have to stand on this side? What does secant have to equal then? 5 over negative 3 or negative 5 thirds. Easy? Okay. Got one more to go. Anybody know what the sixth one is? Cotangent. See, now it works when I stand on this side. I don't know. Oops. Can't spell because I'm talking. Cotangent. We abbreviate that one. C-O-T. What do you think that one is? It's not the opposite, but it's the reciprocal of tangent, which means... It's x over y. So going back to our example, what's cotangent going to be? Negative 3 fourths. Easy peasy? Yeah? So here's the annoying part of today's homework. Monday's homework. Here's the annoying part of Monday's homework. Give me a point, any point. Seven ninths. Seven ninths. Let's do negative seven. I, no, I don't want 52. No, we're not doing 52. So, it all comes down to, again, x, y, r. What's my x? Negative seven. What's my y? Nine. Got to find my r. So, 49 plus 81... 130, right? So r is going to equal the square root of 130, which breaks down into 10 and 13, 2 and 5, which means it's 130, square root of 130. So here's the annoying part. You're going to have to be able to find sine, then cosine, then tangent, then cosecant, then secant, and then cotangent. All six for all questions. I don't know, 75. So, what's sign going to be? Sign's going to be 9 over square root of 130, which is going to simplify to 9 square root 130 over 130. And yes, if it would reduce, I would reduce it. Okay, cosine, negative 7 over the square root of 130, which is going to simplify to negative 7 root 130 over 130. And then tangent is going to be 
Negative 9 sevenths. Yes? Okay, cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. If you try to flip this, the square root's going to go back to the bottom, and then you'll have to re-simplify. But if I flip this one before I simplified, it's just going to be the square root of 130 over 9, and I'm done. Make sense? So what's secant going to be? Negative square root of 130 over 7, right? And what's cotangent going to be? Negative 7 ninths. So far so good? Easy peasy? And yes, on your homework, you're really going to wish that you could just go paste and all six are going to be there. No, you don't get to abbreviate these. These are already abbreviations. You don't get to abbreviate an abbreviation. <coughs> Sorry. The mistake people make here is you think it seems like the S's should go together and the C's should go together, but they don't. We're just remember they don't go together. The sine goes with the, I know, <laughs> sine goes, it just went too big. Sine goes with the cosecant, the cosine goes the secant, the cotangent tangent go together, okay? Make sure you, you don't make the mistake of the S's going together, the C's go together. That's not true. It's not how it works. So, make sense? So far, so good? And there's reason for that, but yeah. All right. The next thing we have to talk about. We've already said, and this is something I would put in a nice, neat spot in your notes. We've already said... When is sine positive? Top two quadrants, right? When is cosine positive? One and four, right? Next, we got to figure out the same idea. When is tangent going to be positive? Okay? Now, if we go back to this, we just now said tangent is what? Y over X. Now, the problem is, these were easy because the R was always positive, right? Now we have an X and a Y where both can be positive and both can be negative. How do you divide and end up being positive? Two positives would be positive or two negatives. So what quadrants do you have two positives? One. One. And three, you have two negatives, so that's going to end up being where tangent is going to be positive. So tangent's going to be positive in the first and the third. Now, the other three, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. If you take a number and you reciprocal of it, if you just flip it over, does it change its positive or negative? Like, what's the reciprocal of two? One half. It's still positive. What's the reciprocal of negative two? Negative one half, right? Like, it doesn't change. So wherever this is positive, what's going to be true down here? So it's also going to be positive in the top two quadrants. Co secant is also going to be positive in the... Right two. Cotangent is also going to be positive in the first and third. Now, this is such a big fundamental idea. I'm going to give you two ways to remember this. I personally think the easiest way to remember this is just written it, writing it like this. If you just write it a few times, sine is positive in the top two, cosine is right two, tangent is first and third. I think that's the easiest way to remember this. Here's another way to remember this. <coughs> it's always cold in here in the winter, right? 
all students are too cold. What's positive in the first quadrant? They all are. Everything is positive in the first quadrant, right? Everything is positive in the first quadrant. What's positive in the second quadrant? Only sine. What's positive in the third quadrant? Only tangent. And what's positive in the fourth quadrant? <coughs> Only cosine. So some people like this method, where they just think, oh, I like all students are too cold. I can remember that. Everything's positive in the first. You don't, need, you don't need to memorize the bottom two or the bottom three, because if you know the top three, you know the bottom three, right? Some people like this, where they go, everything's positive in the first. If I'm in the second, only sine's positive. If I'm in the third, only tangent. Cosine's only fourth. I personally think it's just easier to go top two, right two, first and third. Simple enough? Yes? So we've got these where I'm going to give you a point. You give me the other, all the six trig functions. The other type of problem you're going to get is I'm going to give you, you're going to wish you could do that, I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to say second quadrant, your job, give me the other five. Again, it comes down to what's my x, what's my y, what's my r? What's my x? What do I know? If they tell me cosine is negative two-thirds, do I know my x, my y, or my r? x has to be, and r is, now, why did we put the negative in the, with the 2 and not put positive 2 and negative 3? Because the r can't be negative, right? So that means the negative has to go with the x, right? Okay. How am I going to find my y? Negative 2 squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. 9 and 4, so you're going to get y is going to equal the square root of 5, right? Plus or minus. Is this going to be a positive square root of 5 or a negative square root of 5? Why? All points in the second quadrant have a negative x and a positive y, right? So the quadrant, again, will dictate is it the positive y or the negative y. Once you have these three, you should be able to tell me all your trig functions now, right? Sine has to be y over... Are. Have a wonderful weekend, guys.